we're going to do a quick video on radiator fan and fan shroud assemblies versus no shroud uh, in relation to street cars and track cars. Uh, I know this topic has been covered to the ends of the earth, but I thought we would throw some actual wind tunnel data at it uh, as another point of view. Okay, here's our two test cars. Uh, normally, we would prefer to do back-to-back -back runs on the same car for a true apples-to-apples -apples comparison, but we happen to have this data from both of these cars on hand, uh, and both cars had a stock-style radiator. Both cars had a similar size, small oil cooler. Both cars um, had some ducting from the radiator to the grill. And the difference mainly was the A4 had a stock fan assembly with the shroud covering the entire radiator, while the E36 had an aftermarket slimline fan with no shrouding. Okay, a quick word on differential pressure. So if we increase the airflow through the radiator with hood extraction or opening up the grill, uh, that increased airflow will cause a higher differential pressure on a known restriction. Uh, the flip side of that is if we have um, the same airflow going through the radiator and then we change the restriction of the radiator, then the differential pressure will change due to the restriction. Okay, moving on to the data portion, here's uh, the wind tunnel results from the A4 with the fan shroud assembly. And if we look at our hot rod stamp louvers as a reference, compared to our race louver RT track trim, we can see that we have about um, a threefold gain uh, in differential pressure uh, between those two. And if we look at our uh, BMW here with the uh, slimline with no shroud, and we look at our hot rod stamp louvers in relation to our race louver RT track trim, uh, we have the same or similar uh, threefold in performance gain. Okay, if we take both of those and plot them on the same chart and then add a trend line, we can see the performance difference from one vent design to the next is very similar from the E36 to the A4. The major difference being the E36 with no fan shroud has much lower um, pressure differential while the A4 with the fan shroud covering the entire core has a much higher pressure differential. So while both cars exhibit about a threefold gain in cooling ability, the um, Audi with the fan shroud actually starts to become highly restrictive at faster speeds. And if we take that a step further and uh, plot the um, drag numbers um, for both cars uh, with the trend lines, we can see that the E36 with no fan shroud has very minimal drag gains um, as hood extraction increases. However, the A4 with the uh, full shroud on the core um, has uh, an increase in drag uh, due to the restriction of the fan shroud. All right, so there you go. Uh, fan shrouds. Uh, good for daily driving, traffic lights, not so good for track duty. Um, what does this mean in the real world? Uh, we've seen quite a few customers switch from a um, stock style fan, fan shroud assembly to just a slimline fan with no shrouding. And that's typically worth a good 5 to 10 degrees of coolant temperature reduction uh, while out on track. So, not a huge deal, but it's definitely something to look into or consider. Um, that's about it. Uh, for our next uh, video, we're probably going to get into our hood shootout where we look at 
a set of race louvers on a stock hood versus a carbon fiber extractor hood versus a stock hood with full exit ducting out of the radiator to the hood. Stay tuned.